Well, hello, good people. What you see on the screen now is called Focus. I'm gonna go ahead and generate an image and it's a prompt of a race car going down a race track. And the beautiful thing about Focus is that it makes running SDXL super easy to do, sort of like mid journey plus stable diffusion combining them. Now, because I'm recording in the background, the generation times are slightly longer, but on average for 1024 by 1024, it takes about 25 or 26 seconds on a 3060 Ti, eight gigabytes of VRAM. And as you can see, the quality looks great. Now what's different about this version, if we click on advanced, you'll see that there's a few more tabs than the original Focus. <laughs> I'm just gonna call it focus, okay? So at the top, you'll notice we have our settings. We have our dimensions here, our image styles. The original focus one has them all just laid out in little buttons that you press. We have an image to image tab as well as revisions. This is actually a control net function where you can get variations from an image without a prompt. And then we have control net, which the original focus doesn't have. The only downside at the moment, it's only got canny in depth, but I assume they're going to add pose and some of the other ones down the line. We have a section here for our models to change the checkpoints. I only have a couple, Juggernaut and Protovision. We have a section for our Loras as well. Now let me move my big head here at the moment. And then here is where you can select the models. Currently there's only one of each. And most likely we could import some of the other canny and depth models here as well. Another difference from the original is that you have access to your CFG scale. You have clip skip for both the base and refiner. You can actually choose your own samplers, although by default, they recommend using DPM++ 2M SDE GPU. But if we click on the dropdown, most of the popular ones are available. We've got DPM++ SDE. 2M, we've got our Euler, Euler Ancestral, and who knows down the road, they'll add some more. You can also change the scheduler to exponential, simple, DDIM uniform. By default, it uses the Keras schedulers and their sampling sharpness. So if you're getting smooth skin or whatever, you can up this to get just a bit more definition. Miscellaneous holds your output format, whether you want it a PNG or JPEG. You could save the metadata in JSON or in an image so that you can load that information later on. So the MRE version gives you quite a bit more control. So I'm going to do a quick demo here. We can choose a style. Let's choose the ads automotive style. We'll leave the negative prompt empty for now. And by the way, you can uncheck random to use the same seed if you wanted to. This time I'm going to use a juggernaut for my model. I'm going to leave the sampler as it's doing a great job. And for time's sake, I'm just going to generate one image. By the way, you can load a prompt here as well via JSON or image and click generate and that's it. And you know me, I love easy and simple. And the great thing about this version, it works pretty well with SDXL control knit. Even though there's only the two models, it's not like you're waiting three, four or five minutes for it. It's actually done in less than a minute, usually 40 ish seconds for my GPU. So here's the image. It looks great. The built in styles really helps. For those of you that want something simple and easy that's already optimized, this is a great version to check out. Now installation is super simple. As always, I'm going to leave a link in the description below. You'll see this version, Moonride 303 Focus MRE. Scroll down until you find the download section here. Just click on this and it's going to download to your downloads folder. In your downloads folder, you want to right click and open with. 7-zip file manager. If you don't have 7-zip, I'll also leave a link in the description for this. Within 7-zip, you just want to click on extract and then you would click on the three dots here to select where you're going to download it. In my case, I put it in my C drive under users, my personal folder, and you see it here, focus. <laughs> Now at this point, you could make a new folder. I highly encourage you to keep a separate folder in case you decide to install other stable diffusion platforms or if you have existing ones. So you can make a new folder here. Simply press OK. I've already done that, so I'm going to close this. 
Now, once everything is extracted, you just have to double click this icon. However, for those of you that have existing platforms, this is where you'd want to import your models. So under the Focus MRE folder here, double click on that, and you'll find all the folders that you need for your models. There's a folder here for SDXL styles, your outputs where your images will be outputted to. So let's click on models and you'll see a folder here called checkpoints. Double click that. You can copy and paste your existing models here. By default, it'll download the SDX cell models. We have our control net folder here, our embeddings folder, LoRa's, the same old stuff that you're used to. If you're new to this, this is where everything is, all right? Now, if this is your first time running it, I highly encourage you to put this on your desktop, right click, show more options, send to. There's an option here to create a shortcut to your desktop. That way you're not having to go into this folder all the time. Once you launch it, you'll get your command window. Mine didn't take very long because I've already installed it. It only takes a few minutes. You don't have to worry about downloading Git, Python, or anything like that. It's just set and ready to go. Initially, you're going to see the simple layout. Click on advanced to get the tabs up here. Input is for image to image or control net. So the way this works is that we would go to image to image. There's some options here, load image to input, load image to revision, output to input, output to revision. So let's try a simple image to image. I'm going to click on this. You'll see an option here for revision. Leave that off for now. Then down here, you have your denoising option. So at 0.94, it's going to change quite a bit. Let's leave it for now. You want to enter your prompt and make sure to click on image to image. It's up to you if you want to change your sampling settings and all the other stuff like your models. You can also choose between speed and quality. I'll leave my on speed today since I'm recording in the background. And I want to keep this 1024 by 1024. But let's change the style. I wonder if biomechanical will do anything. <laughs> And let's click generate. Well, it did give it sort of a cyberpunk look. That's pretty cool. Now with control net, let's try the canny version. We'll leave all the default settings. And to input the images, we'll have to go back to image to image, load image to input. In my input tab, I've loaded this image. So we're going to get a similar version. Uncheck image to image. Then we'll generate the image. Of course, you want to put in a prompt whether you want to change the image. And there you go. Unlike automatic 1111, this is more like comfy UI. Even though I'm recording in the background, it only took 46 seconds for this aspect ratio. Now I do have it on speed and not quality. Quality is going to increase your generation times. It really varies on the size. I would definitely recommend this for beginners that eventually want more advanced settings. You don't have to use them. You can treat this like mid journey and just prompt like crazy and let the system do it for you. Those of you that are more hobbyists that want a few more tweaking options, I'm sure there's more that's going to be added eventually. And the biggest plus is that it's super optimized. Even for GPUs that only have four gigabytes of VRAM can run this. But if you're like me and you have eight gigabytes of VRAM, this is a great solution to run SDXL 1.0 models without all the hassle of optimizing automatic 1111 or whatever else you're using. Out of the box, this works great. As always, let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll most likely do a follow-up video in the next few weeks. Until then, my friends, I'll see you when I see you.